Hi, this is Lou, welcome to my channel, and uh, thank you for bearing with me because I've been uh, on a little break for a few weeks, and I am back, and I will be producing videos every week up until Christmas. So the theme, the loose theme that I'm working with uh, for this season is Joy to the World, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later on, about why I've chosen that theme, and uh, what I'm planning to do with it. But first I thought we'd get stuck straight into some painting. So I've got my little set of watercolours here, uh, an extra plate to use as a palette, um, some water, a paper towel, uh, I've got some brushes. So this is a pointed round brush um, size 10 and then a smaller one which is a size 4. I've got this brush which is a rigger which is really good for drawing long thin lines. And then I've got a couple of white pens because I keep switching between them because I can't decide which one's the best. So I might start with one and then switch to the other. So this is the Uniball Signo Broad pen and it's very nicely opaque on top of watercolour. Uh, so I like it for that, but uh, this one can get a little scratchy. So I've also got out this Posca pen, which does a similar job. It's not quite as um, opaque, uh, but it seems to be a lot smoother. So I've got both of them. So if I get frustrated with this one, I'll switch to that one. Um, and then I've got some tape and I'm just gonna tape the edges of my paper today. Uh, you don't need to. Um, I just want a nice white border for this one because I want to be able to mount and frame it and have it look nice and neat. Uh, this is Archer's watercolor paper on a block. This happens to be the rough paper. It's just got a little bit more grain than the cold pressed paper, which is what I normally use. And what I'm planning to do today is what I'm just calling an intuitive painting, which means I'm not starting with a plan, I'm not starting with a sketch, I'm just going to start painting and see what happens. So I've got everything prepared, I've got my workspace prepared, I've got a little bit of time where I can have a play, and that's all I'm going to do, is just see what happens. So like I say, I'm taping my paper. This is some very cheap masking tape I bought at the DIY store, it doesn't even have any branding on it. And I like to stick it to the table before sticking it to my paper and it just helps it come off without tearing. Although I have to say this paper is pretty good and not many tapes tear on this paper anyway. So today I'm going to be mixing up colours quite randomly from my palette. I'm starting by mixing them on this kind of dirty plate to start with which is going to make my colours a little bit more interesting. And I'm starting with slightly paler colours because I want, to, I want to do some layering. That's the only thing I really kind of know that I want to do. I want to layer colours up so that I can start with something pale and then add um, a little bit more detail over the top in darker colours. So let's start here. I'm going to start with a rectangle. So far so boring, I suppose. It's the simple shapes that you build up that will make the pattern interesting. So it doesn't matter if I'm starting with a really simple, boring shape. It'll get somewhere interesting and entertaining eventually. Just use the point of my brush. And I like this brush because it comes to a very fine point, which allows me to neaten up those edges nicely. Um, and then while that's still wet I'll go in with another colour next to it. I can leave a bit of a gap to start with just to give that a little bit time to dry and then let's do like a, a half circle here. Just roughly draw it in, roughly fill it in and then spend a little time refining it. And I've got a hair in it there. Let's get rid of that. And I've got a little bit of a rough edge around here. So just add a little bit more water so it flows a bit better. And then I'm going to join these two areas together. I 
And I should get a little bit of a soft bleed between the two areas because they're both still a bit wet. I don't know exactly what it's going to do, but as part of the process of finding out. I might add in just a little bit of a darker area around the edge. Just let it bleed into the rest, just for a bit of variation. Now what? Well, um, I could put in another half circle there, match them up. I could do like a, a one that goes around there. I could do another shape over here that doesn't touch it at all and then just wait and see what happens. I could do a circle in here. Let's do that. So get the basic shape in and then use the tip of my brush just to neaten that all off. And yes, I'm going to touch those two areas so I get a nice bleed. Again, just to make a bit of interest, see what it's going to do. Let's try and get this nice and round. And then drop some of this slightly darker purple right in the center and let that bleed out and now I'm gonna th I think I'm gonna go into a pink so let's do another rectangle in pink Okay, I want to paint up here now, but I don't want to get my finger in this, so I'm going to turn it around. And let's go for more of a red. Um, if I paint this red next to this pink, um, I'll get a blend. And this is still quite wet, so I'm going to do that trick again of just painting a little bit further away from it. And you could leave this white line in here if you wanted to and uh, kind of cover it up later. I'm just going to close the gap now so I get more of a kind of a gradual move between these different colours. I think I need something else curvy on here and I've got some of this lemon yellow. I'm running out of space on my palette there. Let's put it in there. I might go up to here, like a big arch shape. And again, Join those together. I 
let's turn it again. Put in another circle here, and maybe that should be a red as well. A mix maybe like a persimmon red. I like persimmon. Both as the word and the colour. I don't know what the fruit actually tastes like. I should try some. So these bits here are kind of mostly dry. I think I'm safe. This is probably famous last words, safe to go in around them. And I'm going to go in with a really dark colour because I've got all these nice pastel colours and I want some variation. I want to completely fill in all of this space with colour. And I'm still using this big brush, but I may switch to the smaller one just to give me a little bit more control. See, went in too soon. Never mind. Patience never a strong point of mine. That's really quite nice. I'm liking that. Can I do this side? Maybe. What I think I might do is to do a stripe that kind of goes around here and then follows this curve around until it hits that one there. So let's turn this around and see if I can make the nice the, the edge of that stripe nice and neatly. It's not bad. Let's add a little bit more colour in there. I'm actually going to take some out of that bit there because it is very dark in there. This colour is indigo and it does do a beautifully intense dark blue. Tip of the brush in that bit. I'm just going to dot some more of this dark colour in down this side so I get a nice like variation from side to side. So it looks like there's a continuation of this colour from here into this stripe, stripe there. The next thing I want to do is kind of the same stripe here that goes around that way, similar kind of width. And actually, I think I don't mind if it touches that wet bit there, so I think I can paint that now. Is that all dry? Eh, mostly. I think that's still a bit damp. We'll see. We'll give it a go. And I'm going to use a turquoise blue for this. Again, let's see if I can use the edge of my brush 
to paint a nice smooth curve that follows the curve of this yellow one around. And let's just touch those there and we'll get that little bit of bleed from the blue into the turquoise. Now, I'm going to turn the paper around so I can use the tip of my brush to get into this little point here. Um, I am risking putting my big hand in the wet paint, but I will try not to do that. And then these bits here in the corners as well. Oops. So while I'm painting, I thought I'd, I did say I'd talk to you about why I chose Joy to the World as the theme for this season. And it was something that um, I was looking for ideas for this season. And I thought, well, it's coming up to Christmas. People will want to make Christmas cards and Christmas gifts and things like that. So I thought, well, it would be good to do something kind of festive. But also then not everybody celebrates Christmas. Um, so to be nicely inclusive, it would be nice to do something that didn't, um, didn't require you to uh, be somebody who lives in a part of the world or has a kind of culture where Christmas is celebrated and you could still do something joyful and celebratory and um, uh, yeah, and bring some colour into um, winter, which we're experiencing in the Northern Hemisphere. And I thought I'd like to do some more abstract work and some more patterns. And this seemed like a a good theme to be able to do that with. So my plan is that later in the year, kind of November into December, I will do some um, projects, some illustrations that uh, particularly reference Christmas. So looking at some Christmas songs and Christmas themes. But then for the rest of the weeks, I'd be doing things that are kind of more generic. So things that are just have a joyful feeling about them. And if you are looking to make Christmas cards or if you're looking to make Christmas gifts or tags or something like that, do some big paintings that could be cut up into small parts. So you could take a portion of this and make it into a nice little uh, Christmas card focus, write a little message on it, something like that. Uh, and Or you could do it as a kind of a big painting. So while I'm painting these last couple of little bits, I wanted to tell you about a couple of new things that I've got going on as well. So one is that I have um, I've had a coffee account for about a year. That's not the new thing. Um, I set it up because lovely people on here were saying, how can we support you? And which, which is really nice. And I'm really grateful for that support. But I kind of wanted to, uh, to develop that a little bit and to uh, offer something more on there for those of you who are doing that. So I've started producing an extra video a month and I'm calling it Colour Club. So Colour Club is uh, like uncut really videos, unedited videos for me where I'm just playing around with pattern and colour. So the first video that's up there is from October and in it I just set about choosing the colours that were going to be in this palette that I'm working with for the next few weeks. Uh, but future videos I'll be either swatching new colours or colour families or looking at the colour wheel, um, talking about colour theory 
um, and yeah, maybe playing with some new brands, watching some new different uh, different types of watercolors, um, and then making pages of patterns with what I've swatched. I'm also trying to blog more frequently on there, so I'm trying to uh, do a blog once a once a week, in which I just share little updates about what I've what I've been doing. So that is kind of you know where I'm up to with filming new videos, what I'm thinking about for the next seasons little bits of like analysis of how previous seasons have gone and also things that I'm up to in my kind of other artistic life. So if I've got any exhibitions or um, anything like that that's happening, then I'll be posting about it kind of over there. The second new thing to tell you about is that I kind of started a secret. It's not secret. I kind of a low key second YouTube channel. And uh, that one, um, you'll find linked from my channel page and a few of you have already found it. Uh, but I, I really wanted to kind of give it a little bit of time before I decided to announce it. And the reason that I set up a second channel is because like, anytime I do anything on this channel that isn't watercolour, uh, it doesn't perform very well, and then it hurts the other videos that are performing quite well. That one I set up specifically as a fine liner drawing channel. So if you've liked any of my fine liner drawings uh, on this channel, and there are a few of them, then uh, that's the channel that you might want to go and subscribe to as well. So, so far I'm doing a video a month, which is a kind of a how to draw a particular pattern in fine liner pen, and then one which is more of a process video of me kind of doing something a little bit more in-depth and complicated, like a, a time-lapse video. I'm doing this as a little bit of an experiment uh, just to see whether that satisfies my need for, uh, for making other types of content. But also it's really interesting doing a low-key channel and just seeing if any of the tips and things that I've learned about making videos over the years have, um, have helped in kind of in setting up and growing and establishing a channel. And I think they have. I think there's lots of things that I've learned that um, are really helping it um, grow. I mean, it's very small at the minute, but uh, but yeah, helping find viewers for those videos. So now I've kind of filled this page up with these different colors and I want to see what happens uh, when I just add more pattern on top of them. So I've. I've got these areas here which I've done quite pastel and I want to layer them up with uh, a little bit more uh, smaller areas of pattern. So I might switch to my smaller brush for this section and then I'm pretty much mostly going to be using the same colours on an area. Occasionally I'll go over with like a, a, a different colour uh, where I think it'll stand out and just start putting in some stripes, some dots, some um, um, yeah, I'm not quite sure yet. Some little half moon patterns um, and I'm just going to play and see where it takes me. As I'm adding patterns into this painting, I'm really not thinking too hard about it. I'm trying to uh, spend less time planning and more time just going for it. Choosing a colour and then deciding how I'm going to fit it into my shape, what kind of patterns I'm going to add, and I'm keeping them all really, really simple. So I've already used some arch shapes and some circles, and I'm going to add to those with some more circles and arch shapes and stripes. So I'm adding patterns to most of the sections with the smaller of my pointed round brushes. And then when I've pretty much filled in those, I'll pick up the rigger and do some extra fine details too. I'm choosing to be relatively careful about how my lines and circles and edges look. But you can make this messier or you can make this even tighter and neater if you wanted, depending on what your personal style is. Personally for these paintings, I really like it when you can see there's a bit of character and a little bit of unevenness in the lines and the shapes.
I could go on all day adding patterns and patterns. Sometimes it's good to sit back and just survey the whole thing and just see whether it needs anything more. And with this one, I get to a certain point where I think, okay, that's it. I think, I think it's done. I could keep going on forever. Now, I've got two things left to do. One is to decide which way around it goes. So I've turned this so many times. I'm not sure it has an up or a down. Let me know what you think. Do you think it works better one way or another? I think I quite like it that way around. Second thing to do is take the tape off and see whether anything's bled underneath. So let's see. One so far, that's good. Side number two is good. Side number three is good. <gasps> oh no, I've got a line. Oh dear, I've got a line there. Side number four. Let's see if I can lift it with a little bit of clean water. Just gonna saturate it. It may be too far gone, this one. Yeah, I don't think that's going anywhere. So this is my joyful, intuitive painting. And I'm really looking forward to seeing yours. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you do with this process because I've had great fun with this. Um, here's another one that I made a couple of days ago. Uh, I've been doing quite a few paintings in this style and I've been really having fun with it. So I really hope that you give it a go um, and see what shapes and colours you want to put next to each other and then how you add patterns and come up with something completely different every time. So if you want to share your work with me, then you can post it to Instagram and tag me. Uh, my handle is Lou Rachel Davis, and I do love seeing what you've made. So thank you so much for sharing your work with me that you've done so far. And I look forward to seeing you in another video very soon. So there'll be links in the description box below to those two new things that I told you about. So the first is Colour Club on Coffee, to which I'm posting new videos every month. So it's available to anybody who supports me over there. So that's one off all monthly donations. And the second is that new YouTube channel, which I kind of started a little bit under the radar a couple of months ago. And there'll be a link to that too. So if you've liked my fine liner drawings, uh, then there's more of that over there. So thanks very much for watching today. If you like the video, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos from me, then please do subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. Thanks very much. Bye bye.